Yeah. Hi, everyone. That's exciting. Well, yeah, thanks for that intro, Henry. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. A lot of things, uh, yeah, I wanted to go wrong, but yeah, no connectivity issues can stop us from making this conference amazing. I'm excited to be here, and this conference has always been exciting to me since 2018, 2019, and now 2020. So yeah, hi, everyone. It's really nice to meet everyone here um, virtually, but hopefully one day physically. <laughs> so I'm going to share my slide right now so uh, we can get started with the good stuff. I'm sure everyone here can see my screen. So, as uh, Henry said, I'm going to be speaking about Fast and Furious with Vue.js and Webpack. So, hi, everyone. My name is Sherik Bayomide. I am a senior developer advocate and developer programs manager and here from Lagos, Nigeria, as I said. So, also a GitHub star, um, Cloud Generator Media Developer Iceberg, and a committee evangelist. So, I run quite some number of committees here in Africa. And, uh, yeah, so you can catch me on Twitter or GitHub at developer.io. Um, or developer AU, however you pronounce it, or it's easier for you to pronounce. So yeah, let's get into the good stuff. So we have about 5 billion devices connected worldwide. We have them connected via Wi-Fi. We have them connected via mobile connectivity, but they are connected to the World Wide Web. Over 5 billion devices running from IoT devices, your iPads, your iPhones, your laptops, um, your various, your TVs, your Apple Watches, like, 5 billion plus devices connected to the internet doing so many things. This is amazing. We have all of these devices. And now what we need to look at here is how fast can this go? So speed itself um, is a feature that should also always be considered as a feature because sometimes we can't say we are building a small application that we want to optimize for speed when we've got into probably like the end of the application. No, we should never do that. We should always optimize for speed before we before we start even building the application. We must build out the architecture for scalability, for speed. We must always consider these things. You can't say, um, for example, um, if we're working with Gridsum, so you can't say you want to get an image of, um, you want to like just send an image out there on your Gridsum blog and you are trying to use um, something external when, um, like when the GTAG image given by Gridsum is available, which you're meant to use. These are best practices to follow to make sure that your application is scalable and very fast. So you always have to optimize for speed at the beginning. So it's most suited as a feature. So speed across all devices, every single devices that is connected to the internet. So Vue.js basically is a progressive JavaScript framework for building user experience for the web. That's simply what Vue.js is. So Vue.js is designed to be simple, very flexible. You can change anything. You can make it you want. There are many starter kits out there, many hackathon starters. We can change and really flexible to make changes and get outputs like super fast and immediately. It comes with like, literally, it's amazing. I'm sure many of us here has used Vue.js in one way or the other in building um, some kind of applications, but trust me, it's amazing. It's something you should always use, especially when it comes to simplicity and flexibility. We always want to build something that is simple to configure, simple to get started. We have the get this guide um, on Vue.js documentation. It's really easy to get started with um, and simple and straightforward. Once you open the documentation, um, just just get just get it on your system and just like look at it. You're gonna know what to what like you basically gonna know know what is what. It's not really that hard to figure out. Even though it's your first time on Vue.js, just look here. You know what you basically just know what is what because it's really simple and like it's built that it's built that way. Really flexible to make changes and just just make changes. Like it's really simple and very straightforward. I I, I believe you should use you should definitely use this. Vue.js has um, out of support performance as a feature, and this is this is amazing. This is super amazing because you don't have to start optimizing like oh, wait, for example, if you use a starter kit, you don't have to automatically just start optimizing anything. It's automatically optimized already. You just have to enable something and just make them work and configure them. That's all. And now the beauty part about the the issue we always have when building applications um, for scalability with Vue.js is while we um, use things like starter kit or we start from scratch and, and we have all of these things called pre-configured for us already, we always use um, practices that are not always advised that we use. I give an example earlier of the G tag image. So on Gridsum, we have the G hyphen image tag we use to output images to um, the browser. Anytime we want to get an image from um, anywhere, we basically just, just G tag image. Saying so, Gridsum gives you this feature to be able to use the G tag and it's super performance, automatically optimized and um, automatically uses the, uses the um, placeholder feature. So automatically, so this means that um, 
it's going to firstly um, send out a placeholder, which is like a blank image. That's just going to, same way we see it on Facebook, on Google, when we load it up. It just shows us this blank image and in, it's going to calculate, okay, say in five seconds, the, um, the image um, um, on the, underneath the, uh, the, the, with the blood image is going to load in five seconds. And it's just in shared in the observer API and just sends it forward. It's really that simple. So that's basically how the GTAG works. So performance comes out, we should always try our best not to overdo what Vue.js already has and use what Vue.js already supports. Unless if we keep on adding like so many dependencies and things that we do not need, trust me, it's going to make your application super slow. And you know, you definitely do not want that. You definitely do not want that. Vue.js application is naturally powerful enough to build like single page applications, whatever you can think about that you want to build, Vue.js is there. It's, it's fast. It's amazing. It's, it's there for you. As long as, like, as long as you just do not um, over engineer, I think that's the word. You do not over engineer. I'm going to talk more about that um, as we move forward. So yeah, this is some benefits. So out of the box enhanced um, performance enhancements that I spoke about earlier, really easy to learn. The documentation for Vue.js is on point. Revenue has done a great job with documenting the Vue.js and the whole team. Sorry, Johnson and everyone on the team. It's been amazing. Trust me, this is an amazing, um, amazing, uh, yeah, JavaScript framework. So easy to performance, easy to learn. Documentation is amazing. You, you check out the docs. And yeah, easy to maintain. As I said before, it is simple and flexible. Once you start it up, you get, for this is, this is a product on GitHub, you get it cloned to your local directory. Automatically, once you just get it up on your VS Code, you basically just look at it, you know what is what. You know what, where to start from, where to end, what is in here, what's there. It's really that straightforward, it's simple, and really flexible to like change anything. Easy to maintain, amazing. So why exactly does speed matter? So the attention span of um, a lot of people is very limited, that's the thing. So, uh, um, so we can go from the ages of, let's say, from the ages of um, 17 to, um, let's say, about 24. The attention span there is very limited. You want to, whatever you're giving um, anybody within this range, you you have to give them now. You have to give them now. We don't have time to give them something in the next one minute. That There's no time for that. Whatever they request for, they need it now. And for single page applications, Thanks to Vue.js, Gritsum is super fast. So time is very, very limited. So um, if the website design, like if it's not instant delivery, just you're gonna lose you, you're gonna lose users, you're gonna get anyone. No, no, we stand how powerful or up to date your features um, on your platform is. If it's slow, users will lift. Users will definitely leave. They would not come back because I would definitely go over. I would definitely go to a platform that really gives me what I want now. But then it is like that feature. It doesn't have it. But it's probably gonna have it later. Then, but then this platform has it, but it's super slow. I would definitely go with the one that is fast, that has most of the things I want, but doesn't have that one thing. But then it's fast, so I can just probably find a way to just figure that one thing and still be fast because time is of the essence. So whatever application you're building, it needs to be fast. It needs to be good, and I'm gonna explain why you also how it basically just it becomes faster. So why does speed matter again users love instant delivery as i said before um of like basically whatever they want they want it now optimize successfully and um using the right technologies for um optimizing your speed and making it better after you build large scale applications trust me this is this amazing and you definitely gain users they are um users you will get that they will come to your platform just because um them using your platform is just fast that when they click this, they get it immediately. We, we'll, uh, I believe, we've used the Gritsum. We've used Gritsum, and we see how we click things, and it gives us on our blog, Gritsum blog. So you click on the post, and it gives you back. Um, it gives you back the 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 post like super fast. No time, no no wasting of time. Click it, give you. Get it, give you ASAP, like super fast. And this is amazing. This is this is what we want. This is what the future of tech looks. This is what the future of of web of the web page looks like. This is what it looks like. It looks like speed. It looks like progressive web apps. It looks like using web apps on your mobile phone and getting it easily. This is this is the future of technology. This is it. Speed. Whatever you're working on, it must be fast, no matter what it is. Speed basically is great user experience. Once your speed is is amazing, it's stopped there. It's once you click this, it gets it fast. That's a great user experience. Because whatever you send into this users, they're getting this immediately, almost immediately, and that's that's good. That's amazing, and you're getting definitely getting a paying user if your platform works this way. And I would definitely recommend you using Vue.js in like if you want instant delivery and great speed. So performance is the first impression your product gives users. So the first expression, you are not there to tell your users, "Hey, my product does this, my product does that, my product does like this whole bunch of things," because you are not there. The first impression the users get is the performance. 
your website because you are not there right now to tell them, hey, my platform, when you click this, this happens. Or when you use this feature, it works this way. You are not there to tell them all of these things. You are not there. So the first impression you, um, the customers get from your product is the performance. When they load up the website, how fast does it load? When they want to sign up, what's the experience like? How fast does it give them the sign up page? How fast does it give them the login page? When they click on um, sign up or sign in with social media accounts, how fast is the experience? Is it fast? Is it slow? Does it take so much time? Is it taking up my space on my system or on my phone? What is happening? So this is the first impression. This is a, a whole bunch of performance metrics you have to consider when you're deploying an application online and it's working on Vue.js. Yeah. So you basically just don't, you never get a second. Um, so Will Roger said this, he said, you never get a second um, chance to make a good, a good first impression. Your good first impression is basically what, what, what I see, what do you see when you visit a new website for the first time? That's the first impression. And whatever happens then is basically how I'm going to rate the application or rate that app. That's, that, that's, how, that's how it works. That's how it works, literally. Performance is about um, improving conversations and the success of users. Nothing is more important than the success of the users of your platform. Whatever platform you're working on, nothing is more important than the success of these users. And performance makes them more successful because they can achieve more in less time because you are delivering what they want super fast. And that's thanks to Vue.js. That's, that's awesome. That's big. Because trust me, that's very big. That's literally very big. Because a whole bunch of um, products out there today, they don't care about speed. They don't care about a whole bunch of things that are very important. But thanks to front-end technologies like Vue.js, it's really changing almost everything about speed and how we deliver content and we deliver um, basically just the apps to the users and how fast they receive them. So performance in Vue.js, let's talk more about this. So keep the core of your application simple and straightforward. Yeah, so this is what I was saying before. The core of your application is the most important part of your application. This is where all the decisions are made. This is where your architecture is. This is where everything is. So leave it as simple as possible. Do not add anything. So just as simple as possible, very straightforward. Do not over-engineer. Do not over-engineer. So yeah, you can also tweet this on Twitter so the world can know that. Just please not over-engineer and keep the core of your application simple. When you're building anything, keep it simple. Do not install things that you would never use. If you are not using a particular dependencies, but you installed it, you can uninstall it. Don't leave it dormant because it is taking up memory. It's taking up space. It's because it's going to be doing something because it's there. So make sure you uninstall it. We always forget that. Okay, for example, let's say, um, yeah, one, okay, I think, I think I'm going to go with like, uh, I don't know, any, any package at all that you imported saying I want to, um, you installed the dependencies, you imported it, you tried using it, it didn't work as fine as you thought it was going to work. So we, remove, we just basically remove the import and remove the implementation, and that's it. We always leave it installed. We should, we should always remove it from install. When it's just uninstall it, don't leave it as good. It's taking up space. It's taking up space. Do not, do not get to like use things that you might not even need. Because, for example, sometimes we tend to over overdo certain things, and it just destroys the whole architecture. Because there is a way to do things. There's a way to make your application fast. There are principles you have to follow that your applications become fast. There are principles you do. So you do not just like, just boom. Okay, I think Webpack makes it fast. I'm just going to install Webpack, just configure and just boom. No, it doesn't work that way. Okay, Webpack was, I think I'm going to install Lozad to lazy load images. Then after installing Lozad, I say, okay, I think there's this other one. I'm going to install this one too. Just so you want to make it now, nah, you're gonna you're gonna just make the everything's gonna be big and large. So when the delivery is happening to the client, it's gonna be super super slow, no matter the network. You need to deliver your products to the people, even on slow internet, on fast internet, on mid-level internet. It needs to be delivered to these people. So you need to be able to achieve all of these things. And how you do this? Keep the core small. Keep the main part of the applications very small, as small as you can make it possible. Leave it small. Do not over-engineer. Do not add um, things that you wouldn't use. Do not um, use, do not just basically just do, follow principles that do not work. If you don't know how, um, what, what pattern to follow to build a certain feature, um, ask questions over Stack Overflow, GitHub discussions, or even on Twitter, so they can help, so people over there can help you. Um, basically just know, show you a path to follow to um, basically just configure something and just, Leave it small, leave it straightforward. Your application core needs to be, yeah, super fast. As I said before, I explained all of this um, while it needs to be like super fast. Um, yeah, I've explained all of this so we can move forward from that. So yeah, let's talk about Webpack. So um, uh, I'm pretty sure we have seen the new Webpack 5 and yeah, it's, it's amazing. They are doing great stuff. They are doing great stuff, honestly.
So, but we're going to be talking mostly about the web platforms analyzer. So, because this is what's basically going to help you understand your application and what exactly you need to optimize, what exactly do you need to improve the performance, what do you need to understand what. Because before you know what exactly to do, the Chrome Lighthouse tool that we all use already, I believe, um, if you don't already use the Chrome Lighthouse tool, just you could go up to Google and search Chrome Lighthouse, so Google Chrome Lighthouse. You're going to get to see what it is. So, um, sorry. So you're going to get to see what it is. So, um, so Webpack Bond Analyzer. So the Chrome Lighthouse is really limited to what it can give you of your application or what exactly is slowing what down, what exactly is happening. But the Webpack Bond Analyzer is your key to everything. So this is like the master key to like <laughs> everything. So this is like the master key where you get to analyze and understand how your application is doing now, what exactly you need to cut off, what exactly you need to slim down, what exactly do you need to lazy load. So this is going to help you. So basically the first step as usual is to install the Webpack Bond Analyzer using the NPM or, or Yen, however you want to get that sorted. So um, yeah, so web app on analyzer. So that, that's basically gonna add it to your package.json file, as simple as that. Um, the next step is to basically just configure Webpack. And so there's gonna be a, um, a, a file that's gonna appear called the webpack.config.production.js. So in this file is where you configure your Webpack. So after configuring your Webpack automatically, um, you do something called NPM run build. So, NPM run build basically, if you run this in your terminal, this basically just builds your application and runs it on a once on a new IP address where you can get to see the web button analyzer of your like basically of your entire project. So once you visit that URL, that's um, as you can see right here, you see a one two seven dot zero dot zero dot one um hyphen four eight. So once you um uh, visit this URL, automatically um. You get a preview like this on your browser. So yeah, as you can see right here, this is a small application. We can, so as we hover, so this, this is a GIF. It's meant to move so you can get to see how it works. But since it's normal, I'm just gonna explain how, um, basically how this works. Um, so as you move your hands all around here, so you hear, it shows you like the size of this um, package. Like you can also click and go, like go into like this file, these folders and get to see like how large are the things inside here. You get to like see all of these things. So while we analyze all of this, and that's why it's called a webpack bond analyzer. analyze. I analyze basically your applications, even your notebooks, anything you want to analyze to see how fast, or how, or rather how big it is, how like how much space is it taking up. So this is helping to show you like what exactly can you optimize, what exactly can you make faster. This is the key to everything. So you do this part. There's also the part of you using um, the Chrome Lighthouse. So it shows your performance probably is up 50%. It shows that, hey, you don't you don't have PW configured. You don't have this configured. It shows you all of these things also. So you get to optimize all of that. And you can also do this to also optimize for better. Remember, speed is the goal. The goal is to, when you, work on, like you need to be super for whatever you're doing, speed is the goal. Whatever, like whatever you're building, it doesn't matter what kind of application it is, it needs to be fast. If it's not fast, it doesn't matter how beautiful it is. If it's not fast, trust me, it's not usable because whatever you're trying to deliver to the people, it needs to be fast. If not fast, it's not usable. So yeah, um, thank you very much. That's the talk. Yeah. So um, if you have any questions, um, open to questions and um, you can follow me on Twitter and GitHub at developer.io. So yeah, thanks guys.